2019, um, what is new is the fact that I'm back with Tori Kelly. Not new, but I could consider that, right? Uh, and it's a tour just Tori and I, super challenging, but I'm digging this a lot because every show is just a new surprise in a good way. And, uh, but besides that, um, I'm working on my project, making some new music. And uh, yeah, I've been writing a lot. Um, what else? I mean, new signatures models, right? I mean, this was actually last year, but from the last interview that I did with you guys, so I would say that. So um, yeah, so new guitars, new tour, and um, yeah, new expectations in my music. Yeah. So my solo project, I've been procrastinating a little bit on that, unfortunately, but it's going good. You know, I always get inspired when I go back on the road. And uh, this is actually helping me a lot being on tour right now because my creativity sense is just going crazy right now, you know, and having Tori, you know, working with Tori is just, amazing because that also inspires me a lot because she the way how she you know she's so musical and the way how she express herself in music is just amazing and I feel very inspired by that and uh, yeah it's going good um, I'm saving uh, my second half of this year just for that and but I've been writing a lot recently so I'm super excited for that for what's coming yeah so first thing probably I would say uh, to don't go too fast you know work on the basics first you know get a, your bendings right your vibratos right then you get worried about getting crazy and shred a lot, you know, as many notes as you could. But yeah, so I would probably say to the 12-year-old Matthias to just take easy a little bit, you know, and work on the basics, your rhythm sense. But besides that, I would probably, I'll probably not add too many words, you know, because I think I was very inspired and super stoked about guitars, you know, so yeah. I would just add this little word. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you think he would have listened to you? Probably not. Because <laughs> I was listening so many, like I was listening just a lot of, you know, progressive rock, metal, like dream theater, you know. I just wanted to be the fastest kid. But yeah, I'll probably introduce myself, introduce, yeah, John Mayer's music to myself a little earlier as well, because back then I didn't know who John Mayer was and like D'Angelo, all these guys, so probably, yeah. Right now, okay, that's a good question. I just found out about this singer-songwriter. Her name is Sabrina Claudio. She's amazing. She has like a beautiful, she has this R&B touch. I just, I've been listening to her a lot recently. Um, there's also this UK project named The Japanese House. Yeah, they're amazing. Super like experimental, alternative rock. Um, I've been also listening to a lot of this American band called the band Camino, and it's just amazing. It's crazy because, you know, they're not guitar driven, but that's 
also inspiring to me because I can get, you know, the creativity sense from what it's driven then a lot, you know, so it's, I like that a lot. So Sabrina Claudio, the band Camino, Japanese House. Um, also, I'm a huge fan of the 1975, it's a UK band, and they released an album not too long ago, and uh, yeah, I just like them a lot. And uh, there's this amazing singer-songwriter, uh, her name is Leanne La Havas, and she has a beautiful voice, and I, yeah. So there's a few names that I've been listening a lot recently. Yeah, the older I get, the less guitar I listen to. But it's probably because what is training the most. But, you know, you cannot get away from those, the shred, the 80s, you know, Daft Leppard, White Snake. I'm a huge fan of those dudes, you know. And um, John Petrucci. Oh, man, I just love the sound. Yeah. Us, us too. Yeah. <laughs> Don, Don and I are huge. Wow, I would say there are three elements on that. First, is the church. Yeah, so first element is church. This is where you know I grew up playing music at. And second element, I would say the shred world. It's gonna be like you know the um, the dream theater universe, extreme. You know, I just love how Petrucci writes the melodies and stuff. It's just so amazing. Uh, so church, the shred world, let's put it that way. And now I'm getting a lot of this R&B universe, the context of R&B. So these three elements, that's probably what make my world of melodies. Yeah. Different, but you know. Yeah, I actually, so since I started playing with Tori, I think my way of improvising and creating lines changed a lot. We were actually talking about this during rehearsals. She was like, oh yeah, I really dig what you've been, you know, playing solo-wise. And I was like, yeah, it's actually your fault because she does a lot of those runs and those lines that I think is just amazing. So I actually spent a lot of time just studying what she sings, you know? So I think that was like an amazing approach to me when I start playing with her, you know? I kind of changed my way of thinking in terms of melodies and licks, whatever, you know? Yeah, also Derek Trucks. I think he was like a game changing to my universe, you know? Cool. Yeah, for sure, it's crazy. It's just different. I've been listening to a lot, I mean, not, I've, not recently, but I remember when I wanted to have a different type of approach, I was just start getting into more bass players because I love the way how those guys play, man. You know, like Jocko, and even like just like, you know, in pop gigs, because this pop gigs, man, it's just like a lot of bass driven, you know? It's all about the rhythm and the grooves. And uh, I've seen a lot of like beautiful leaks being, being played by those guys, you know? So I kind of got influenced by that. Yeah. So that was sick. Oh yeah. The first song's pretty cool because it has this bluesy vibes and this is actually like I don't remember playing any bluesy ideas with Tori since I started playing with her so the first song of the set is amazing it's the song called language and it's kind of cool because she says about I want to learn your language and you know the fact that I'm born and raised in Brazil so my native language is Portuguese even though it's not I mean I you know I just relate to that it's kind of cool and uh, so yeah, language is one of my favorites. Then there's Coffee, which is a new song. It's just so beautiful, man. She does this amazing run. Uh, so language, Coffee, funny, 
which goes towards the end. Uh, we came up with an amazing arrangement for that where she does like a question answer thing. So she, she does a run and then I answer it with a guitar run. It's just so, people like a lot when we do that. Um, and the hits for sure, you know, like Nobody Love, which was probably the first single that she released off her album in 2015. So yeah, those songs are my favorites to perform on this. Yeah. Wow. That's a nice question, man. Oh. I would love... Oh, man, I'm thinking about now. I would love to jam with Prince. I know it's kind of random, but Prince, I, I've, I've heard like, Prince was a super jam guy. He, he loves jamming with people and stuff. And I wish, I wish I was, you know, part of those jams. Uh, there's always a dream, you know, like being part of a band. And the Chili Peppers is also like a goal to me, like a dream, let's put that this way, because, you know, John Frusciante is like one of my heroes and the way how the Chili Peppers start the show is always like a jam. And I really love that type of thing, you know. So I would say the Chili Peppers, probably a jam with Prince. And, uh, wow, I'm thinking about it like a singer that I would love to play with. Oh, uh, wow. It's kind of hard to think about it, but I would love to play, I mean, make a song or whatever with Haley Williams from Paramore. Yeah, she was my girl crush, so that kind of helps a little bit. But yeah, so those three names. Yeah. Um, so at first started Supernatural. You know, I remember getting back from Musicians Institute and just being like, wow, I just want to record this, you know, as a homework. And then I started, you know, gradually thinking about putting that as like a consistent content. So yeah, the first start was just natural. It was just like, yeah, whatever I thought was cool, I went to post. And then it became a consistent thing. And so the more, you know, followers and like the feedback I was getting, I was just like, you know what, man? Let me just start being more direct, you know? So I was starting complaining more about the content and stuff, so. And nowadays, I'm kind of in the season of just trying to save more for my, for my album. So I just don't want to give them much. Because now I got in a point that people already know me for the Instagram guy, you know? It's crazy because when, you know, people mention my name, it's like, it goes alongside with, oh yeah, the, the, the guy that makes the videos or like the Instagram dude or whatever. So now I'm in a season where I'm just trying to chill and save, you know, I don't want to give spoilers much, you know, from what is next, so. But yeah, I used to be super, you know, natural and then started getting like organized and like, okay, cool, let's, you know, because it, before it was just 15 seconds, you know. And I had to come up with something cool in 15 seconds, you know. So I remember being super, oh yeah, focused on that. But now I'm just like, okay, cool. Let's save as much as I can right now. Yeah. In terms of music, I think the less you think, the better. You know, yep. that's the way I like. When I start getting like, you know, just overthinking and everything I do, it's just, it gets in my way and I, cannot feel like the, the natural flow, you know? I don't feel like, oh wow, things are going, you know? And I remember struggling. It's crazy, I'm talking about this because like it's just an Instagram world, you know? Like, but I remember struggling with, oh man, I'm, I don't have anything in, in, interesting right now. 
because of that, you know, because I was just thinking too much. So it's always good to take a break and be like, bro, you don't need to worry about it. Like, you know, just do your music. Just think about, you know, how it was in the roots, like the 12 year old Mateus, like just chilling in the room, you know. No Instagram. No Instagram, no freaking, oh, y'all yeah, play something, you know. That's the, the best. Year old Mateus may have some advice for you. <laughs> exactly. We changed the game. Probably the 12 year old Mateus would be. Hey man, you're thinking too much. Yeah, slow it down. Slow it down. Yeah. That's a nice point. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's a cool question because I see the two models in different ways. So the pink signature, I think it's like the, my tone machine. It's one of my favorite guitars, you know. And even comparing with the other pink models, it's just like, I mean, of mine, uh, I just think that it's just like, the tone of that guitar is just precious, you know? It's, it's there, you know? Something super, you know, that, that it's made by it, you know, for it. And the black model is just, it feels like butter. I just like, Whenever I grab that guitar, I just feel that I'm like, literally like, oh, it's so buttery that I go, you know, I can go crazy on like, you know, all over the neck. So I think that's like the two references that I have about this, my, my signature models. And so one is about playability and the other one is about sound. You know, I would put that way. So if you want go for shred stuff, I would probably go for the black motto. But if you feel like, oh, I just want an amazing tone. But that doesn't necessarily say that it's hard to play. You know, the pink guitar is amazing. It's just, you know, it's just like the pink motto has the tone, you know, and the black motto has the comfort. You know. I like that. I should have written that before, man. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So I, I think that's the best definitions of my mottos right now. Well, the first thing I would say is the versatility, you know. Because having a humbucker in a Strat is just... Because I remember playing a single, single, single Strat. And it's just... Sometimes there is something that miss a little bit. And when you're playing for other people, you kind of need, you know... One guitar to satisfy as much variety as possible, you know. You need that variety of it. So that humbucker, I mean, those humbuckers of my guitars are amazing because we still have that stratty sound, but at the same time, you have the option of, you know, having a bigger, you know, fat sound. So I just love, I love having a humbucker in my, um, in my signature models. I remember at first, you know, getting a little bit weird about the look, but now I just got into it, you know? It's just like, it doesn't bother me. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's my, my signature. You know, it's my signature humbucker, my signature guitar, so I'm totally fine with it. But yeah, just having that option for the sound is just on point. I just think that's very important, you know? Yeah, I remember not getting that abrupt difference of gain. Because, you know, a humbucker automatically gives you like a huge output difference. So I just wanted to have a balance. And I remember being, because um, I, I tried Pete Thorne humbucker at first, and that was actually very amazing. I love that, you know, that path, right? It was humbucker, the P. Thorne humbucker based on the path, all right? And uh, I just loved that. So we kind of got influenced by that. Thanks, Pete. And um, 
So we just adjust a little bit because I wanted to have this um, low mid area, you know, the, the frequency. And uh, we just increased up that a little bit because there's also a thing when you have a humbucker on the bridge could get super bright. So I, I wanted to have this balance, you know. I d didn't want to go too crazy from the neck position to the bridge, you know. So that's what we try to make a short, you know, a short difference. But still a notable difference of like, oh, cool, he's in the bridge position, you know what I mean? So, yeah, so that's, I think that's sound-wise, that's what it, what I, we were looking for it, you know. Whew, one of those questions, my friend. Speaking about future is always different, weird, but I see myself with two records, maybe three, never know how inspired I'm gonna be. But in five years, I'm gonna be 30. So I'll probably, I'm just going personal right now. I'll probably be married, maybe. Uh, probably getting into more the studio life, you know, making more records and less road, you know, getting the tour. But I, I want to work in instructional videos as well, you know. I probably, I'll probably get, you know, this platform of just like, hey, this is how it, it worked out to me. So if you want to get inspired by that, here's the link or here's, here's the content, whatever. So I would probably see myself doing this type of things. And uh, yeah, maybe a kid, you never know, 30 years, but things are changing so much. You know. Shorter hair for sure. I'm still thinking about the mustache. I don't know. Maybe a little more muscles. No, 30 years, man. Gotta look good someday. <laughs> yeah. So we are here in San Diego. It's March 5th of 2019. I just want to say to all my fans from Brazil, America, and the rest of the world, um, I'm releasing a record in 2019. If I'm not releasing anything in 2019, I'm not going to be called Mateus anymore. So, yeah, there's a record coming. Probably some shows, tour, so. Be sure to be following me on my social media and because I'm gonna keep you guys updated on that. Okay. And Sir Guitars, my favorite. They have my heart. That's it, guys. They're the best. Thanks for having me. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.